Hey everyone, it's Leon with the first ever episode of What's New at Kentic. Okay, it's not the first first episode. I did do a short one as a promotion, but this is the first real one. With that completely unnecessary clarification out of the way, let's get started. If this was a marketing video, this is the part where we talk about how complicated and complex multi-cloud environments can be, or how hard it is to get a clear understanding of how much my cloud environment is being overused or underused or used at all. Or I might shout, look, it's digital transformation, and hope you clicked away before I had to explain what any of that meant. But this isn't a marketing video, so let's be real. You've got cloud stuff, you've got on-prem stuff, and managing all of it is a pain in the butt. But so was spanning tree and BGP routes and Lantastic networking, but we found ways to make those work too. Which brings me to the first announcement of the first What's New at Kentic, complete Azure observability for Kentic Cloud. Those are a lot of words. Let me break it down. The actual point is that with a single click, you can get Kentic's insights and functionality and see your data center and cloud networks in one fell swoop. Azure, you say? Sure, that's what I'm talking about today. But the big deal is not the actual headline. The big deal is that within Kentic, you can map traffic and measure performance on everything from your on-premises network all the way through the three major public cloud providers. But back to Azure, some of the really cool stuff you can do with this includes Understand path and performance details of traffic routes that connect Microsoft Azure workloads and data centers across Azure Express routes. Dig into traffic across Azure firewalls, load balancers, application gateways, and intracloud connectivity that's connected to the Azure vWAN. See the impact of network security group configuration on security and productivity. Better still, this isn't just a retread of something that Kentic already had and then thrown into a cloud container and spit polished with a new UI. Like Kentic's other cloud-specific solutions, this was purpose-built for Azure's specific network architectures. Next year will mark 10 years the Kubernetes has been a thing, making the ubiquitous container orchestration system older than uh, Apple AirPods, hoverboards, and the Ice Bucket Challenge. Now, there are two things we need to come to terms with about Kubernetes in 2023. One, the Kubernetes is the de facto standard for container management. And every Kubernetes container has an honest to God packets and bits router right in it. It's called IP tables, unless you're using NF tables, IPS, isovalent, but we also deal with those. The point is, there's a router in them, our clusters, which is why we've developed Kentic Cube. Kentic Kube, Kentic Kubi, Kentic, 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 Cube. We're just pronouncing it Cube. If that bothers you, take it up with us in the comments. There is nothing more that we like than a holy war about how to pronounce some technical term, unless you say GIF, in which case you either mean peanut butter or you are wrong. In any case, we built Kentic Cube to provide specifically this kind of visibility. It supports cloud-managed Kubernetes clusters, AKS, EKS, GKS, as well as self-managed clusters running on-premises. With Kentic Cube, you can see what's happening inter-pod, inter-node, inter-cluster, in pod to internet, internet to pod, all that traffic, all in one platform. So you get pod-level visibility into traffic spikes, transit and transfer, latency retransmits, and egress. You can identify traffic flows between Kubernetes clusters and external systems or clients, and you can audit and alert on traffic to and from embargoed, prohibited, or watch-listed domains. There's obviously a lot more to say about this completely new capability within the Kentic system, so look for videos, blogs, and a major Broadway musical coming soon. Every once in a while, I'll be working at a conference, showing someone a feature, and they'll say, holy sh cow, is that new? A lot of times that feature has been around for years, but new is relative to what somebody already knows, which is why I'm carving out a few moments in every episode for something I'm calling new to you. Now, typically when vendors talk about DDoS attacks, it's because they've either suffered one or they have a product or service that's gonna help you protect against them. Now, of course, Kentic does have exactly that kind of product. It's called Kentic Protect, and it enables our customers to automatically detect and block malicious DDoS traffic. But that's not important right now. Today, I'm talking about another aspect of DDoS attacks, which is blocking spoof traffic that may be coming through your network to launch a reflection attack against others. Aaron Weintraub, who is the principal engineer over at Cogent, believes that service providers have a moral obligation to be vigilant against being the source of spoof traffic. 
In a recent webinar, Aaron discussed his methodology for identifying spoof traffic coming across his company's global network, and it had one of the most active Q&A sessions in Kentic webinar history. Now, that webinar is more than just a speeds and feeds featurette. It focuses on the creativity of our customers. And yes, the ways in which Kentic extensively fosters that creativity. As Aaron explains in the webinar, detection is only the first step. Following up with downstream networks to remediate that spoof traffic is a whole other adventure. It even has its own bingo card full of common excuses. If rewatching a whole webinar isn't your thing, then my colleague Doug Midori also wrote about this recently over on the Kentic blog. You can find a link to that in the show notes. So if this is all new to you, you really should check it out. Now, all of this, Azure, Kubernetes, not having to suffer DDoSs, which is an attack technique that's literally older than the songs Tub Thumping, Darby Girl, and Mbop. It all points to the fact that networks are often an observability afterthought. Correction, it's not even a thought at all. In some circles, if you say network observability too loud or too many times, you get removed from people's Christmas card list. <sighs> My point is, working in the network space and also caring about monitoring and observability leaves me feeling like we're not allowed to have nice things, and I'm not the only one. Recently, Kentic CMO David Klein wrote about exactly this topic. He laid out both the problem with this type of thinking and a path forward. He also references everything from Vanilla Ice to Joe Bean Esposito, if, you know, that's your thing. The long story short of it, is that legacy network monitoring just isn't going to cut it anymore. You can find a link to that blog in the video description and show notes. In fact, you can find links to literally everything I've just mentioned. Why have I gone to the trouble, you may ask? Because as much fun as it is to make these videos, it's still nothing more than my way of keeping up with all the new stuff Kentic is doing every month. So until next episode, I'm Liana Dotto, and this has been What's New at Kentic.